Welcome everybody. Friday night. I'm not in the shed. Martin Oak is in the shed. What's happening? Freezing. Freezing. I'm in a lovely I am uh I'm in Belfast working, so I've had to do this from my old bedroom. You see the old stereo store there anyway. Yeah, there. The shed the shed's not fussed in an Arctic blast. No, I know. Bit of, bit of cold weather coming in. Uh we're in game week fantasy. We are on show eleven. And we're on game week 10 of fantasy football. Uh, last week, we are up five hours. Not good, is it? Not good. Oh, well, we were claiming a bit steadier than that the weeks before, so... I appreciate every follower we get. Yeah, five new followers anyway, so... Uh, five new friends. Thanks, everybody, for following, subscribing, liking, and... Um, uh, <clears throat> 142, Mick got 142 views in a week. Mick O'Brien got. Um, so this week we have a, oh, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Bad Boy Boxes, uh, who's also donating praises for weekly praises for the fantasy football. Um, and then this week we have a special guest that we're going to unbox. Uh, we're going to talk beers. We're going to, what's in your box? Match highlights. Um we have the fantasy football week, as I already said. Painter's Corner and Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Let's get into it. Fantasy football. Uh, so, the race for the top 10, the top 10, the top three has changed ever so slightly. We still have the same two at the top Paul Pearson, Tenemite. Is still first. He got 55 points and he has 160, 100, 613 points. Barry Spence, Chopper AFC, he got 62 points and he's in 609. There's four points between the top Ooh, two. Come on, Barry. Uh, you can't say that. Kids for Flicks is our friend as well. <laughs> but Barry's part of the family. Barry's part of the family, I know. And then Bugsy's babe, Steve Malone, has moved out into third. Uh, I think he replaced. That he replaced uh, Chowdhury, Trevenage. Um, he got 43 points and he's in 5 8 2. So he's roughly he's roughly 20, 31 points behind. Right. Uh, our has point score and wins bad boy boxes solo keepers is Thomas Regan, badly drawn blues. That's Coffee Art. And Coffee Art has got himself some bad boy boxes solo keepers. <clears throat> so they'll not have to travel far from Liverpool. Uh, he got 69 points and he's up to fifth and he's in 580 points. Uh, Very good. Natalie McCulloch, I love Hazard. She got 100. She got 61 points and she's up to 15th and she moved into your spot, Bradley. Took your spot. You got 38 points uh, and you're in 518. So you're roughly 95 points off the lead. I'm better than some. Shit the bed this week. You did. Uh, our Norway friend, Karaji El- Elfison, he got 63 points. So he's doing rightly after joining the league. Two high scoring weeks. Um, let me see. Simon Stewart moved up to 20th after a couple of weeks. So he was doing terrible the last couple of weeks. <coughs> he- He's up the twentieth. Um, Simon takes no truck way out of English football either, but no, he's a Scottish. He, he enjoys the Scottish football. So he does. He's Aberdeen mad. Um, Craig Stewart is up the twenty fifth. Oshin and Jude still remain in the wooden spoon, but Oshin is close to the gap. He got what did Oshin get? He's got he's close at the eighteen points anyway. I think he pulled back four points this week. So well done, everybody. Um, top players this week. Top of the pops was Cavani, fifteen points for United. I don't think many people would have had him because he's really? been uh, this United. He's been a sub, but I've put him in my team this week. Uh, De Bruyne got ten points. Do you still have him? I don't know. I don't know. Who does he play for? Martin. Man's- yes. What? You froze, dude. 
You froze. I'm still froze. No, you're all right now. De Bruyne. Yeah, Do you still have De Bruyne? Don't know. Who don't does he play know. for? Man Belgium. City. Man City. Yeah. Do you still have him? I don't know. Did he not break his arm and I put him out? Aye, something happened. And to then him. he didn't have a break, a broke arm at all. He was only taking yeah. the hand. And I thought, well, fuck you, I'm not having you back. I don't think I have him. There you go. You're lost. Oh. Uh, Relish got 10 points. Wilson for Newcastle got 12. Lloris, the goalkeeper, got 10 points. I don't know if he saved the penalty or else he was just really good and loads of saves. Uh, Is that Man United boy? The keeper? Aye. No, he's plays with Spurs. And then two defenders got good points. Chilwell and Kyle Walker, eight and nine points. And then Jada got nine points for Liverpool. So a match cancelled tonight. Newcastle match was cancelled for COVID. So the first match will be tomorrow. Uh, Burnley v Everton. So that's fantasy football. Thank God. You want to uh, introduce our friend? Our new, our, our guest. Is he ready to rock? He's ready to rock. Are you ready to introduce him? I'm ready to introduce him. Everybody knows him. Official senior world waspin number one, gracing the shed and your teenage bedroom. The sexiest <laughs> man in Subirio, Mr. Brian Daly. How come, Brian? I've been looking forward to this, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. I think Mr. Bradley has. <laughs> this is I've, a... I, I've done nothing all week, but fast and prepare, Brian. Yeah. I can't believe it. I can't believe we've got world number one in the uh, shed. Yeah, still. Still. The no, sexiest I... man in Subirio. Yeah. The love you. People, people may know you've already done a sort of slight interview for us a couple of weeks ago. Um, and you couldn't make it on. So this is this is your, this is your, so obviously we're not gonna go through all the questions I already asked you. Yeah. Um well how are you keeping you everything well in your end? Yeah everything I'm I'm, I'm personally okay. They're, they're fine, you know. Keeping well, keeping away from people. <laughs> itching to place to be with you. Oh, aren't we all Brian? Yeah, itching now. It's been it's been so long now it it, it feels like I've retired. No, no, it's it's hard, isn't it, when you don't get to play? There's nobody around you that you can play against or bubble there's, with? There's only Lucas, but he doesn't really want to play that often. He'd rather play on his PlayStation than actually play a real game. This is what happens. Have you, uh, have you got a beer with you tonight? Yeah, I've got one. What are you on? Oh, I'm on the, uh, the Budweiser. It was, it was my camera. Oh, your, your, background, your background's blurring it out. It is, isn't it? Is that Budweiser Zero? Yeah, yeah. Just just in case you have to go out driving later. Me, you, my my mum's been in hospital. My mum's been in hospital the last two weeks. Oh Jesus, uh, she alright? Yeah, so she's she's okay. So I just picked it up and took her home now. So just in case you have to go out later on, I'll just have a zero beer. Oh, happy days. Well, well, not happy days, but hope your mother's alright. Yeah, she's good. Yeah, we're asking about her. Yeah, we'll do. Because we know we know Bradley upset her a few t- few times before, so yeah, she's she's waiting to get you. <laughs> <laughs> she got she I'll, got a stick to it, you in. <laughs> I'll bring I'll bring flowers for Mrs. Daly. Don't you worry. Next time I'm over, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> he stopped calling you the bastard, and he calls you sexy Brian. I so. Well, to be to be honest, I, I was quite I quite like that nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, the bad. It's a term of endearment. It, it is. It's who you face, who you play next? Fuck, Brian the bastard daily. He's coming at me. Fucking Brian. It sounds much better, doesn't it? Hey, Bradley, what are you drinking? Well, no English beer in our office, this is Brian. But you being a local man, you being a local man, supporting local teams, setting up local clubs. I've gone for, I've gone for the most local beer I could find. It's a Brandywell Brew, yeah, it's yeah. A dairy a dairy brewery, and this is a a percentage of the sales go to Dairy City FC. Is it? Play in the Brandywell. Aye. Oh, that's brilliant. 
part of a wee bit of a fundraiser thing. You need to drink a bit more so you can get a decent team, though. No. Well, that's it. Tell me about it. It's not even a joke at the end of the season, Brian. <laughs> Well, I've just gone for the traditional Guinness. Yeah. So, just keep it simple tonight. Uh, <clears throat> what's the crack, Brian? A couple of wee questions that have come up, new questions that have come up that we never asked you before. So, Ooh. I'm going to jump in straight away with the, the oh, funniest one. On, have you ever cheated in Sabudio? Pardon? Have you ever cheated in Sabudio? I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer for you, Brian. I'll answer for you. No. He no. has. No, when, no, when, no. when you say, have I ever cheated at Sabutio? I'm not as good as some of the top European players. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, so some, 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 some classic ones out there. But I, I've learned from the best. And I'm, I might manipulate my opponents better than some. How do you do that? Uh, it's such a top class secret. You have to play <laughs> me to feel it. <laughs> That's just I, don't think game, I think I think you've always hidden away from me, Lawrence, when we've been in the same room. Yeah, definitely. Because I've seen the thrashing you give Bradley before. That wasn't a thrashing. <laughs> Let him off. There was a, a, a three-one and a one-nil. Yeah. I, I give um, I give the moth a good thrashing once. Yeah. We see that's, that. a, yeah. that's the one we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. Did he score against you and you disallowed it? Um, for, for flicking it, lifting his hand. Yeah, he nearly slapped me in the nose. Yeah. It <laughs> <laughs> no, wasn't it? He yeah, nearly. Yeah. I, I tell you, even better still. He argued with Mick. Was it Mick from Wolverhampton? Oh yeah. Mick was refereeing. He was keeping score, and Mick says it no, and he went seven. And he went, no, it's eight. <laughs> and went, it's not at seven. <laughs> <laughs> That makes it so much better. Yeah. Now, he's, he's a really nice lad, but he's, he's when I speed up a little bit, he's, I can catch him out quite easily. Yeah. Um, but you know, I do that with most people anyway. It's just just a little bit of skill I've got. I got <coughs> much now. He is actually a good player. I actually heard through WhatsApp groups or some Facebook groups that he's selling all his stuff. So I don't know if he's pack, packing it in or not. Or... Oh, that's a shame. Uh, you don't want, you don't want nobody packing it on. No, yeah. no. I don't know. We don't know if he watches or not. But if he, if you do watch Moth, come back. Don't be leaving. Yeah. There's not enough. He, not enough of us. No, we need. You want playing? Definitely need more people, especially yeah. up where we don't have many. What we're we a have? Day and breed. Where? We're a day and breed. Yeah. We are. I, d- I did a little video um, last week for a, a youth club over on the Whittle. And it was a similar scenario to what yours yours is, but without the beer and without the swearing. <laughs> <laughs> you were shite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, was alright. It was a good laugh. Um, so they, they want me to go and promote over in uh, in the Whittle side of it to to help them grow another club, um, which is what I'm going to do, as well as my club and the London Road lads, which you help out on. I'm going to help them. Because I've been doing Burnley as well, been helping Burnley set up and, and get all their their club organised in the right direction, and they've now got three EW pitches with goals on, um, and it's it's looking really good now, and they've got, I think it's around about fifteen or sixteen players, who who, who are all local to them, you know. Is this the Burnley guys? The Burnley guys, yeah. So while they're all still relatively novice players, they've got a lot a lot of potential, you know. Yeah, and, and they're all willing to learn to learn to play. Where about is Burnley, Brian? From me, it's about fifty miles, fifty-one, fifty-two miles. It's, only, it's an hour. It's an hour on the motorway. So do you do yeah. that? You were doing that commute. How, how often were you commuting up there once a week? No, well, before it was. It happened during the first lockdown. I've been up there twice for meetings, and we were about to have another one, and then. The total lockdown thing come in, we wasn't allowed to travel up there, um, so I, I couldn't go unfortunately for the the last one which got cancelled, and hopefully we'll have some more in the new year. So I'll, I'll commute to that one. 
Ah, so yeah, it's, it's it's hundred mile round trip. It's not the distance; it's, it's the playing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and giving experience to these guys as well, because they can play amongst themselves all day long, but once they see how I play, and it's not all about trying to score; it's about stopping your opponent scoring goals as well. You know, because the best defenders tend to win most of the competitions, not necessarily the guy who can score the most goals. You know, the, the guy, the guy who's, who's blitzing everyone 10, 11, nil, he'll come up against a good defender and struggle to score and get beat 1-0. You know, and that happens quite a lot in big tournaments. We were we were talking before about playing the likes of Kenny and playing Mark Farrow when we were at home. Um, <clears throat> obviously playing the likes of yourselves and Tom Burns and stuff. But yeah. it, it, it improves your game. Well, you know, when, when you see people doing things that you, then you try, you know, it does definitely improve. So obviously <laughs> what you're you're helping the young guys do that. Well, what what I do when when I'm playing someone new or someone who's who's a novice, I I actually train as I'm playing, but I, I train in a certain way. I, I'll do the I'll do the same move three, four, five times, and I want them to defend the move, so I'll okay. keep repeating the same move until they put, put the block in the right place, and then I yeah. move to the other part of the pitch and do the same move three or four times again. And what I want them to do is understand how I'm attacking and how to defend me. So I can quickly understand if you've got the the tactical awareness in the game from the off. Because yeah. if I do the same thing three times, you, you need to be able to stop me doing it. And it's quite simply, I'm just waiting for you to put one block in and then I'll move away from that and give you another chance to do another move. So I, I, this is how I train the London Road lads, which is why they're getting quite competitive now with other players. Because they can block people now. They've learned how to defend, which is now making them dangerous beating other people. Yeah. Which, which is good, you know. Um they're still relative newcomers to the game, as 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 we all know. Um it takes ten years plus to be <coughs> a player. You know, and he's only halfway through it. But we've seen such a rapid rise um with Ruby and their quality beating adults at such a young age. So I, I think by the time she gets to 15, most of us will really struggle to play Ruby. Oh, Jesus. I, I always say that. Once I've, she I've, starts growing, once she yeah. sprouts up. You know. I was, I'm waiting for me to sprout up as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't reach. <laughs> so, some of them tables in France, I can't even see the gold in my reach on him. Uh, they've been up too high. Just, that's just trying to disadvantage you, Brian. <laughs> you know, chocolate. Talking of, talking of competitions in France, What's yeah. the best? What's the best uh, tournament for you? Like, what's your favorite tournament? Honestly, my favorite one is probably Mons. I've been to that about four times now, and every time you go, it, it's extremely well run. It's it's the, the club organization is fantastic. Olivier Pierre does everything right. He's got a big big group of supporters that help run the tournament. Um, when they had the, the World Cup in Primaries a couple of years ago, we was over there then. And unlike most clubs where the players are doing all the work, these had about an army of 30-odd people helping out in the background, from yeah. cooking the food to serving the drinks to running around the tables, putting the referee name plans in place, taking the scores to the tables. It was a phenomenally well-done thing. But that, that's been going on since the, the 90s. You know, at the first couple of times I went over there was in the 90s. Yeah. And, and it's just getting better all the time. And it's but, never stopped? No, it's never stopped Mons. Mons is brilliant. But if you ask me what my favourite ever tournament was, it's probably got to be the, the World Cup in Silkeborg when I went over to, to play there. What year um, was that? God, you're asking a question now. What decade was that? Give me a decade was very early. <laughs> Before I lost my memory, <laughs> it was in the nineties. It was one one of the first festive ones, and we went over it as an England team. We all went on the same plane. We all we all sort of went as a group, and it hasn't really been done like that since for for the England squad. We sort of like individually book our flights, yeah. individually book everything else. But that was done as a group, and Tom Taylor did all the organisation for that, and he was excellent at it. We all had to go down to, uh, I think it was Gatwick or Heathrow we flew from. 
um, over to Denmark and uh, we got transport across there. Absolutely brilliant atmosphere, great World Cup. And that was probably my favourite because it was my first World Cup. Oh. And oh, if, yeah. you think, if you think about the history of, of what you do and what you achieve, the yeah. first big tournaments was, was that was my first big one where I entered. And I was okay at playing then. I wasn't great, but I was okay. And I, and I got to the, I think it was the quarterfinals in the Open then. But, <coughs> I, did any, but I did okay. But I've done next to nothing since in World Cups. I'm usually too drunk from the night before to, to perform, as, as most of us are. <laughs> yeah. What, in that World Cup then, what, what age were you in your early early teens? I was in my 30s then. <laughs> I'm 57 now. <laughs> Be yeah, 58 in January. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> I knew you, I knew you. I was just saying, yep. Yeah. You, we had Michael Brown on here last week and he was saying they I went to... You. They went to Rome and they all, I think they all met in London and then flew from London. But he yeah. says there was a bit of aggro with, I think it was England and Wales or Eng- Wales no, and Scotland. No, it was with, uh, it was with uh, John McGiffin, who was the Scottish lad. He was the player. Bob McGiffin was his dad. And Bob was the integrator against Carl Jung. And Bob apparently spat at Carl Jung on a coach. And that started the, the ball rolling. I and have and when Carl played John in the match and he, he beat him um, and he shouted justice at the end of the game. And that Is was that where that comes from? Just, that's where it comes from. That's the right. famous justice shout. Um, but one of, one of our Liverpool players was at that World Cup. His name was Mark Lewis. And he, he was only 15. He was one of the junior players. And um, when I was in Scotland last year, I met him... Um, a guy in Scotland who, who went to the same World Cup at the same junior level as Mark Lewis did. Now, Mark Lewis at 15 was a phenomenally good player, um, but in the World Cup, he'd come up against better defenders in the Italians and, and he just couldn't compete. And that was the one Vasco Grimaresh won the World Cup. Yeah. Um, when, when I was head of the English Association in the early stages of the early 90s, I was given by Trevor Spencer that actual World Cup, which I've still got in my possession, ten, hidden waste. Um, so I've still got that World Cup that Vasco Grimenech held at that tournament. You have it? Right. I have it, yeah. Quite the trophy they have. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a trophy. I tell everyone I've won it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's fine, I've won it. Didn't say I won it in a raffle, I've won it. <laughs> include, include that when you're showing us your boxes, your bad boy boxes. Yeah, I'll get up, polish it up. Polish it up. <laughs> yeah. well, I'll, I'll, I'll do my boxes and I'll just slowly go over to it and say, oops, didn't you see that one? <laughs> oh, there's the other one. Tap, tap it over. <laughs> the other one you were talking to Tom Baines about, and it's about the Sabutio tournament, and it was run in 2013. And it was a, it was four or five different places where the, the winners and runners-up qualified. Is that the, is that yeah, the one but, Leeds or something, is it? Yeah, I, I played in Leeds with with um, Tom and he beat me in the semi-finals. He was just lucky that day. And um, <laughs> when it come to the, the, the actual finals, it was the top four out of each section went. So I, I qualified being in the semi-final positions uh, and I beat um, Richard Stock in the final 5-0. So I, I was the champion of that Sabutio tournament, the last one run by Sabutio. Just the record. Very good. Very good. And Richard, good friend of the. Yeah, uh, he's, a, he's a great, great race, as you know. You know. Yeah. yeah he's a, he's a brilliant. Re- 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 Semi-retired now, is he? Yeah. Is he? Yeah, his wife's not being too good, so he's he's sort of like staying local to his wife um, until she gets a little bit better in her health. Like the last time well, we were on Wol- when we were over on Wolverhampton, he was he was saying this was his last one he was going to. Yeah, it was. You know? That was the last um, traditional Sabutio tournament. He he went he went to the win his last traditional one, which made three wins in a row for him in the traditional one. I'd won the one before him, and then he won three in a row. Very good. That's the way to do it. Richard, if you, I don't know if Richard watches, but I hope your wife's okay and send yeah. her send her love. 
No, he's he's truly missed as a player. Yeah, Richard Richard's a good guy. Yeah, he's truly missed as a player. Richard, yeah, top, yeah. top player. Is he? Uh, am I getting this right? Is he a singer or is he musical? Is not Richard? Uh, yeah, yeah he, he's um, theatre orientated. I remember seeing something before about him singing. Or doing his, something. His fa- I think his family are, are all from the theatre for many years. I think he's talented in, in quite a few ways. He, he he does a lot in the tennis. He was a top tennis coach as well in Wales. Uh, his son uh, plays t- table tennis or something, does he? For no, pr- proper England? tennis, yeah, proper tennis. Over, proper, proper tennis? tennis. Yeah, over, over the big net, I can't see over. <laughs> <laughs> You've had hard life, Brian. <laughs> You're a good ball boy. <laughs> <laughs> The tennis balls just run are, across the net. Tennis balls that big to me. You wouldn't even need to kneel down. You could just stand at the side of the net, and when exactly. it hits the net, run over, walk over, and lift it. Yeah. <laughs> You'd still be below the net. It's like you're so good at Sabiru. It's like full size. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk to them, boys. You can, I can talk to them. I can play golf at a place to be there, but can't make money either. <laughs> Here, so tell, tell us about the, how the bad boy boxes all came about. Um. The bad boy boxes started because I wanted to do a hobby and I, I didn't really know what to do. Um, and I seen a, um, a laser cutting video. And I thought, oh, that looks really good. Interested in that. So I set about finding um, how to how to do it. And um, I, I sourced a building with laser cutters in that I could go and use. Um, you have to pay for the hour and a 10 hourly rate basically to use it. But I went yeah. there and um, learned how to use the laser cutters and I made my box, my my own individual box first. Uh, Trevor spent Trevor Shot asked me to make one for him, which I did. So I made a Trevor Shot one, which I ripped apart um, an EW box and it was owned by Brian Butterworth. So I sanded all, the, all his names off the top of it redid the box inside and made it out as Trevor Shots. Um, because Trevor Shot had sold a, a box to uh, Danny Lilly with Trevor Shot's name on it. So why Danny Lilly? <laughs> but Trevor did exactly the same, you know, he bought someone else's box. So I did them too. And then I, I got asked by a few other people to make them. So I thought I'd make a couple of boxes just to see what it was like. So I did the, the Italy one first and the Brazil one. I did a big Wolverhampton Wanderers. And I, I've done lots of other individual ones since then. So the likes, likes of that box, yeah. Super I, I have to say, um, no spoof, the quality. Yeah, the, the is, quality. Is unbelievable. Yeah. You know, yeah. even from Jude, our Jude got one, the uh, Royal Rovers one. Yeah, yeah. that's that one. Couldn't so believe, that's couldn't that's believe the yeah, couldn't believe even all the all the cutting and all this carved well, done, the writing and everything, beautiful. That, that, that's what I'm getting better at. The first one didn't have a plate on the inside of the lid, but now I'm putting plates on the inside of the lids with a bit more detail and a bit more information on. So the the first few, I I used the a different type of text format when I was cutting into them. Now I use a better one, which is a higher quality. So you can see it, it's deeper, it, it looks more impressive. Um, but the, the actual design is the same as what my original designs were. I just yeah. make it better now and I put more information in. So if you look at the sides, there's little names on the sides. Brilliant. Name, name. I, I, did a, I did a really nice box, um, an, an island one for the 60th birthday. That was beautiful. Yeah, and, and that was that was really nice. I know it was the, the Republic. But it's it all and, and I had all the squad names on the inside, one of the uh, sides. I put the whole yeah. squad numbers and names on, on the list. And, and the match results and everything. The match oh, results are on the end. So I've, I've got to do a similar one for um, the Mexico. A guy wants a Mexico one from um, 86, I think Mexico was. So I've got to do a Mexico one. But it's in a similar colour to the Italy with the green, white and red. Yeah. So, but, but the boxes themselves, I'm getting... A nicer variation of boxes. And um, we've got a few on hold at the moment because I can't actually get into the laser place uh, because because of the COVID restrictions. 
So I'm struggling to get in. I'm struggling to get materials off. I actually waited six weeks for a piece of yellow sheet uh, because I'm particular on the colour yellow. There's yeah. different shades, so I, I wanted a particular colour yellow, and I, and I struggled to get it for six weeks. When it come in, then we had the, the lockdown in the place, which is expanding uh, even further. I'm hoping we can get in sometime next week. I can finish a few of the boxes off. But I'm just doing um, a Watford box. Box of the moment. I'll show you. I shouldn't really do this. But I only did this yesterday. Um, I don't know how good it is on the on the screen. This is my camera. This is my camera. This is the first first view, everybody. This is the oh, first. That, your background's killing it. Your we're only seeing, we're yeah, only seeing the badge. Back. Oh, the badge looks good. Is that you've done what? that in the plastic, the acrylic stuff? Yeah, yeah. It's made it's made out of four pieces of acrylic. So if I, if I strip it apart. Be like a magic show. Hang on. I take the tape off the back. Because I only put it together with tape. So I take it off the back. And I'll start again. So is, it, is this a new thing you're doing? Yeah, these are new. These, these, this, that's why I'm saying getting better at doing these things. So th this is this is new to me. So what I'm doing. Oh, I'm gone. You still there? Am I still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. still there. So I've got <clears throat> the outer frame. You yeah. can see that. Yeah. And then I've got a black part. Um, you see the black part? Put it, put it, it in your chin. You can, if you put it towards your chin, we'll see it. See it. <laughs> there's a yellow part as well, <laughs> just in case I left the black one. So there's a yellow part, and it's shaped around the little uh, yeah. user's head. Yeah. Oh, very nice. So, so it's all right. Like when, they all, when they all go together, to they make? I've, I've got a wooden version because uh, I made the wooden version first. They make a wooden version of it, so I made a wooden one as a as a trial to to see what it looked like. Because yeah. obviously, I, I I copy. You know, I have to say that I copy the the Watford badge myself. So although it, it's a Watford badge, it's my version because I've copied exactly how the Watford badge looks down to the the details in the moose. So it's all it's all part and parcel. Give me a second, otherwise I'll forget this moose about the hoose. So so when when I build them, you know, I've, the the top portion there which says Watford in there, I, I I I ink them in in the letters so it comes out. So if you have a look at any anything coloured, like the ink ones, I've, I've, I've black most of the lettering in, and um, to make them stand out. The, the wooden ones, the lettering is self-coloured basically because of the stain that I use. So everything wood is self-stained. But the, these things I'm, I'm doing now, these are new to me. Um, I've, I've done a, a few of them. Um, I can't mention a couple of them because they're presents for people. Oh no, don't be, don't be messing up your Christmas. No, <laughs> but but the, the likes of the non-league, non-leagueish teams like Harrogate. I'm doing a Harrogate Town box. Uh, which is like strange, but that was for the guy who bought the Leeds United wooden box, which is a similar one to yours. Um, done in, done in the, the Leeds United one, and yeah. that had inner lid on it as well. Um, and the inner lids come because I got asked the question, could I? So I hadn't done them before, so I thought, well, of course I can, I can do anything. So that's what I did. I started making them as people asked. So my first go at a badge was the AC Milan badge when I made the AC Milan box. So that was my first go at actually physically copying a badge. You know, like the Derry City badge behind you. Yeah. I, I look at that on the screen and I basically just draw it out myself and copy it as it is um, in, into me, me system. And uh, it goes through about three processes to get it as, as the component parts. So right. I'm just, just doing shirts and stuff is getting better as well now. When you're uh, when you're when you're all squatting down after Christmas, I'm gonna get you to do me a probably a Celtic box with one of those fancy badges now on it. So yeah, have you seen the Celtic boxes I've been doing? No, I I, I John, don't John know. Halpin got the last Celtic box off me. I've seen that was nice. Yeah, John's is nice. But they're all, they're all nice. And I've got a, a sporting <laughs> club from Portugal to do based on the sales of the the Celtic, the Celtic box, because they're the same colours, aren't they? Green and yeah. white. Oh, that's right. They're sporting us, but definitely, definitely, in the New Year. So, 
Yeah, that's the I'll, I'll 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 do them discounted for you for your your people on the on the on the thing because you know so, I'm doing them discounted for um, Sabutio Land. Have you seen the one that's been sending to him? Oh no, are they selling them? Yeah, he's selling them on his on his site now. And oh, luckily right, yeah. for me, he's selling them at an extortionate price, so it makes me better. Makes me better value. <laughs> Magic. Magic. <laughs> I have to say, I you'll, have to, you'll have to cut that bit out. <laughs> it's too late. Cut, it's too cut late. <laughs> oh my God, it's not live. I have to say, Brian, when, when Lawrence arrived at my door with that bad boy box here, the dairy box. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? I was blew away, man. The, the gesture alone yeah. was too much but well, the actual what, what, what I, enjoy, I enjoy putting all the lines on it to join the lines up around the outsides to make it look like the tongue and groove of his like the, the, the shade I, I don't know I don't know if it comes I, I, I like I how he gets to keep it Brian what do you think about that wait sorry I like how he gets to keep it he has well there's he, a there's a day city 2019 away after calling me Brian the bastard I think he's going to get near it I know. Brian, I, know. I, I, stand, I stand by Brian the Bastard. I think it's brilliant. I was going to send you some uh, add-ons to stick over his name. <laughs> <laughs> so on that one, we've got Derry Away on yeah. CLR Dynamics. And then we have our own Kerry City Table Football Club. That's nice, that one. We'll not talk about the bases. No. Well, let's talk about the business. Well, well, when I did yours, I did the Derry City figure in the in the right colours, didn't I? Oh, yeah, yeah that's absolutely perfect, man. Yeah. I wasn't sure about the shorts. I had to look at the shorts to get the black ones. You never see us boys in shorts. This is Ireland. <laughs> you know? Ireland, isn't it, yeah? One day a year, you'll get the sun and there's no Subidio. Straight to the beach. But doing the boxes, it's just like, it's a hobby. And I enjoy making them. And I enjoy the, the, the variations of the boxes that I get asked to make. And and that's what's good about it. Not everyone wants a Liverpool or Man United box, but I've yeah. made I've made a few of the Man United ones. I made I put a bit of fish in them so they stink. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, I was uh, I was painting on a friend's face sir yesterday, and he's a Liverpool supporter. And I wrote, you, "Painters always saying but when they're doing wallpaper, yeah. what you, your name." So I just wrote on the the date and the name, big Man United. So when he's sitting in his living room. Watching Liverpool <laughs> underneath his wall. <laughs> <laughs> now I've done I've done quite a few. I mean, I did, I did a West Ham one for Jerry as well. I did a West Ham and an Ireland for Jerry, and both of them were the the big mahogany boxes, which is what I did for Ruby and um, Kane. The, the the very heavy them ones. Yeah. You won't get, you won't get them through customs because they charge you all your luggage and everything. So I that's thought what you must have been. I thought you must have been thinking about these boxes a long time, because when was the last time? Was it Wolverhampton? Yeah. You were looking at yeah, I was, you were looking at my box, and my yeah. box is a lot shorter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, and you were querying, you were querying it. What what do you usually do that there? How yeah. do you fit your goalkeeper on? What that's else can right. you put on it? And then when I seen these bad boy boxes come out, I thought. I thought you've been planning this for a brave one. Yeah, it's it's been in, it's been in the pipeline a while, but well, nothing happened to it because I didn't have the facilities to be able to manufacture them, and now I've got the facilities and and the technical now to make them. I can basically do whatever I want. So when I do the video for you on the boxes, I'll show you my one, um, which is based upon a, a guy asked me for a, a black bear and a and an England. So based upon the England I did for him. He wanted the um, the twin towers, so I made the the Wembley twin towers little portion for it. And I've since then copied it to my box and the one I did for Chris Thomas, but they're all slightly different, like different colours, different theme. Chris Thomas didn't want any blue in his; he just wanted red and white. But when you see the boxes, they're all they're all nice. They're all they're beautiful. They really are, and all you the big never, names. And you you're, never, you're throwing out some names there. Yeah, it's, it's oh. when you like Guy Palmer had to come to my house to pick his up. He's a fucking gentleman, Ham, isn't he? He's lovely. He really uh, is. Really is, man. He's, he's a man mountain, but he's a really nice. So, Jesus, he's yeah, he's huge, right. isn't he? Yeah. 
but, but he come over. Uh, his daughter was in Liverpool University, so he come over when she was settling in in September, and he picked his box up then. It was a Tottenham Hotspur one. I called, I, it, I called it a moody Tottenham Hotspur box because <laughs> they're a moody team. <laughs> moody team. <laughs> Did you get a wee game with him when it was over? Yeah, we I played him twice. Um, he beat me, I think it was 2 1 twice. It was a close game. The second, the second game was very close. I, sh- I should have really beat him the second game. He must be that good, has he? Oh, yeah, he's, he's a good he's, player, man. Yeah, he's beaten the best in the world. But so have I. But, you know, he's, he's doing it regularly. You're a, you're a fucking very good player, too, Brian. Do you know what I mean? I know there's a lot of Brian's number one and all, but you're number one for a reason. Yeah, but that, that's only because I've got more points from the, the way the system works. But that's the way it works. If that's the way the system works. The way it works, works man. The system. But no. if, if it was festive points, when I played Perfect. festive points a lot, and when I travelled all over the world playing, I got to number four in the festive rankings. And I that's, was. Really, that's what I was going to ask you. What's been your highest festive ranking? Fourth? Number four, yeah. Four, but that, that's that, fucking. Where are you now? Oh. I'm not even on page 27. I'm way off the list. <laughs> I, I, but if, you don't, I, if you don't play the tournaments, don't, you don't play, the I just don't play enough tournaments to, to maintain the point structure. Yeah. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to play. Um, but the, there's guys out there who, who I'd never played. I'd never played Bruno Gossett. But when I was growing up into the, the game, he was one of the greatest players around at the time. And uh, I, got, I got to play him. And I said to him, I've, I've wanted to play you for so many years. I mean, this has only gone back about three years, four years when I played him. And um, I knew how great he was as a player previously. And you don't lose that skill. You might yeah. might be a bit ring rusty, but you don't you lose your max, your skill. So I set out just to hold him out at arm's length and try and keep it as close as the game as a possible could. But in the end, I, I beat him 2-0 in the end. And I didn't let him get a clean shot on goal. I, I, I just set my defence up at <clears> him. <throat> As a big uh, Jose Mourinho bus in front of me. Pardon, <laughs> I just, well, pardon, I just wouldn't uh, let, him, let him anywhere near me defence and I managed to keep him out and I beat him 2-0. And he, he was he was very gentlemanly like when I shook his hand at the end of the game. And I said, I'll play you for ages. And to beat you was just an honour, you know, and it was. Uh, but there's, there's guys out there, like I played Vasco a good few times and he always seems to pit me by the odd goal. Uh, but I, the fact that a score passed him gives me hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're giving him a game anyway. Brian, I've a, a, a very well important job for you before we wrap up this evening. Yeah. We're in December. It's the first week. Advent is upon us. We need the, the lights turned on in the shed. Brilliant. Do you want me to? So I thought, no better, man. Yeah. If you, if you can give us, a, I'm going to turn off the big light. If you yeah. give us a wee countdown. And we'll Christmas it up. Okay. <clears throat> I'll turn off the big light now. I'm still here. Oh. oh hold, on, hold on to see where I'm going. Right. <laughs> right. Do you want to come down from 400? <laughs> 399. 399. Five. Give him a five. Give him a five. Five. Uh, give, give us a five. Five. Go. Four. Three. Two. Two and a bit. One. Switch on. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Oh, it's that. a party shed. Oh, hey. party oh don't stand there. Hey. Right, Bradley, oh, where are you now? Turn your light back on. Give me the wee tour. Give me the wee tour of the shed now when it's all lit up. Oh, is it that? That's not a shed. That's a palace. That's a palace, is right. <laughs> the, the, the good astro pitch. Yeah. Mr. Sabudio man up there. Now, I, 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 I want to come over there and play you boys. Right. Oh, you need you're, the, you need you're, the... You're, there's an open invitation, you know that now. Yeah. Get yourself a wee flayed over. Yeah, well, I, I played... Um, I played Quite Kenny the years ago. I, I played Kenny and I played... Um, who else have I played in Ireland? Lawrence Cummins, because he played in our Liverpool League for a while. Um, Trevor can't, see, can't see you. Turn your light on. Who, me? Bradley. Oh, Bradley. He's, he's, You're spoiling the ambience of my shed. Just turn your shed light back on for fuck's sake. He's, he's doing it so the kids don't know he's Father Christmas. 
The amount of editing I'm going to have to do now for this fucking tube here. <laughs> He'll be editing until Tuesday. <laughs> fucking easy. <laughs> you were saying about Lord, playing Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Commons. Yeah, I played him. Um, I played Kenny. There's a couple of other Irish lads I played as well you know, back in the 90s. Um, and I, I, yeah. I'd say again. Mark Farrow, you must have played Mark Farrow a few times. Yeah, yeah, I've had a few good games with Mark. He was teammates with me for a while. That's right. Yeah. Phoenix, London, or Yorkshire, Phoenix. Yeah, we won the um, the British Championship together. Um, and we won a f- couple of other big things together as a club. We were, I, I'm not sure whether he was in the Grand Prix team that won, but he was in the IO team we won. And, you know, part, part and parcel, he's a great player. We've had a few co- close games. Down to who scores, with Mark, it's down to who scores first. Because with, with Mark, when he's got a, when he's got a lead, he's he's really good at getting this second goal. All right. If, if you can get a, get a couple of goals up on him, you know he, he struggles like everyone else. That's your secret when you're playing him: score first. Uh, it's fucking getting the score first. The only thing, Brian. I don't think I've ever scored against him. Oh, now you're saying before about cheating, you need to do a bit of that to score first. <laughs> I don't know. Last time I played Mark, and dude, the only the first time it wasn't a four 0 I think yeah. I scored against Mark once, and it was still it was four one. I still got the Farrell four. Yeah. The last time I played it was one 0 they Mark, and it was it was tight enough. Yeah, tight enough. I wouldn't say I had him on the ropes at all, but uh, there was the chances. There was a time Mark was going through. Um, he was struggling to shoot, and he, and because he couldn't chip the ball. He used to hit it as hard as he could low. So I, I caught on to that quite early watching him. And uh, just tell me goalie low and saved everything. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got over that. Yeah, you don't know when that was, but he's got he's over chip, He's chipping it now. It's no good anymore. No. Like when I went over to, to Athens to play in Greece, um, lo- lovely fellas, and he took me to the clubhouse and they made me play about six or seven games on the run, and they were videoing the games. And I was one of the top few in the world at that point. And what he did was they analysed how I was scoring goals, which is why I, I, I started doing a similar thing to what they've done. Yeah. And what, what he did, he, he, he analysed. <coughs> now, as you know, I'm not the tallest of people in the world, so I can't reach from much from behind my goal unless the pitches are low enough where I can reach to just inside the halfway line. If I can reach inside the halfway line, I can score goals. But if I can't quite reach the halfway line, I'm struggling. But when I played the the lads in Greece, the the pitches were quite low because some of them are quite portly, so they need the lower pitches because of the bellies. So what what it did is, yeah, you you can leave that bit in. They have got big fat bellies, the Greeks. They do, they do. They're all the same. same. They're all the same. They've all got slap heads like that and, and um, big fat bellies. So anyway, what, what you were doing, you were analysing where it was attacking from. So what I was doing at the time, I, I was sort of playing more on the run goals, where I was playing the balls from inside my half quickly to an attacker in, in his half. And the next flick was through the gap and I was shooting on the run. And I used to score umpteen goals like that. And what the guys were doing, they, they learned to put a sweeper in the space. So as soon as I flicked the first one, the sweeper was going to the space where they, they had a 50-50 chance when I was attacking. And I didn't cotton on to it at the time, what they were doing, until the, until the tournament at the weekend. And um, it was a real struggle. And that, that was a tournament where individually, I think I got to the quarterfinals. But as a team, we got to the, it was the semifinals of the final. I played with Wolfgang, Wolfgang Haas, Greg Dand, and Marcus Linder. It was a mixed team because we didn't have a team going. Yeah, good. Wolfgang Haas was, I think, he was the junior world champion at the time. He was only, he was only a baby, you know. And we, we embarrassed some of the top Greek players with, with Wolfgang in the team, and we, we did really well. Um, and he wasn't sure whether we were going to win the tournament or not. I think it was Athens who beat us, and it was, it was we were close games. All of the all the games were close. Right. But they're lovely fellas, but they knew tactically then what I know now. And that was like 30 years ago. So they they were well ahead of us. 
Brilliant. <laughs> well, here, friend, we're going to have to wrap it up because you you could go all night. I think we we'll let you. <laughs> yeah, sexy, sexy, sexy Brian can go all night. Yeah, yeah sexy can go all night. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> next, we're gonna we're gonna show your bad boy boxes. So yeah, after that, um, match highlights of Bradley. So Bradley's gonna produce some match highlights. So, friend, thanks a million for coming on. Really do appreciate. It, it's a pleasure, mate. We, we know it's the oh, second, Brian. the second coming. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, there you go, Brian. You're uh, an absolute you, star, man. All right, see you soon, boys. All right, mate. Cheers, see Brian. You, Brian. So, no, bye, bye, see bye, you bye. Bye, bye, bye. Now I've got a cousin called Kevin. That's Brand's boxes, and thank you, Brand, for coming on. You were absolute star as always. Cracking, cracking. What so uh, here is match highlights. Hope you enjoy.
Bradley, thank you as as always for getting match highlights. Your star. My pleasure. I have nothing else You're to do. Hard. Nothing else. No, no. Um, Painter's Corner. So last week I'd said about doing Diego Maradona. Does anybody want to do a Diego Maradona for the man who sadly passed away last week? So the only person came back to me was Coverfield, who's done this beautiful Newell's old boys um, pose. Uh, got him moving. First time I've seen Coverfield doing a moving figure. So beautiful as always. So thank you, Coverfield. I didn't get the time. I'm absolutely slammed, slammed with Christmas orders. I just you're a fucking chancer. I, I don't. You I drag honestly, you drag boys out of their daily lives, week and fucking week out to do things for your show, and you hadn't even a fucking time to pin one wee marred on a man. It's it. I don't have honestly. I don't have three or four hours to sit and do a marred on it. So I'm sorry. But everybody, everybody puts an additional effort. Thank you to Coverfield. You can't Coverfield. be your whole. Thank, not even, thank you not even in your own shed. Check out Coverfield. Um, also, our wee buddy, Simon Stewart's back at the painting. So he is. Up at Pakistan. He, he's doing, uh, he's in the middle of doing Aberdeen <laughs> and he's in the middle of doing USSR. CCP. USSR. Yep. Um, so good to see good to see Simon back in. So that is that is Painter's Corner. A quick one this week. Um, Don't mention my new brushes. Oh, uh, you got new brushes? Oh no, no, you, no, no, no. Move on, move on. How are you getting them on? Now. So what are we? Are, are we expecting something from you? Them. I'm going to finish my Germany. Right, oh. This is the end of Painter's oh. Corner now. Can I finish Germany? Yes. You West Germany away. West Germany, 1990? Yeah. And Benfica. Benfica. You look fucking bad, Santa, with that hat and that fag hanging out of your mouth. <laughs> Putting on the effort, man. Putting on the effort. I'll get my lights on next week um, when I'm back in the shed. So... Do you want to introduce your mate? Ladies and gentlemen, what can we say? There's a slew of Subidio table football related YouTube shows racking up here, there and everywhere. Weekly, monthly, every other day, spur of the moment ones all coming out. Many of us, steady, table football weekly, every week, bringing you (laughs) Every week, bringing you world-class Subaru entertainment. World-class in, in, in the sense of the one and only world number one, Ruby Matthews. 
joined this week by our mentor and also senior word number one, Brian Daly. But ladies and gentlemen, Ms. The World One and Only, Ruby Matthews. Ruby, Ruby! Hi, Lawrence. 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 Hi Lawrence, because of the lockdown, uh, I've not been able to play in at any event. I thought I'd tell you about my last game with my dad. So I lost 2-0. There's still no events, but I've just played a game with my dad and he beat me 1-0. So I've been playing with my dad, but had There's no wins. There's still no event, so I've been playing something with my dad and practicing. Thank you, Ruby. As always, an absolute star and takes the thing every, every night to put this wee video together for us after school. Thank you, Ruby. And we are the world number one video show because we have Ruby and Brian Daly. Sexy on. Brian Daly. Sexy D. Two number ones. We're number one. It's a video show. So that's it. All wrapped up this week. Um, Obviously, we're getting close to Christmas, so the Christmas show is going to be good, aren't we? We're going to have a Christmas special on Christmas Day, released on Christmas Day. We're going to be round the fire, talking Christmas, talking to video. We may have a special guest. Santa Claus. <laughs> right, Bradley. Thank you, as always. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your... Highlights and everything else you give us. I'm going to um, leave you with the, the ambiance. <coughs> Are you wearing your pajamas? <laughs> Alexa, play I Wish It Could Be Christmas every day. Great, sir. Best of luck. Merry Christmas. See you next week. See you next week. Merry Christmas. Bye, 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 bye.